Good afternoon. I'm Karen Jernigan, and I am here in Aurora Grande, California, with Ernest Clement. Today is February the 3rd, 2018, and we are here to do an oral history uh, with some of the memories that Ernest has about King City, California. So before we get started, I want to um, uh, introduce Ernest and make sure that uh, we have his permission to use this information um, as educational information about history. So Ernest, could you um, let us know if we have permission to um, share this information with other people? Yes, I'd be glad to have it done. Okay, and we're going to assume that everything is to the best of your recollection, although you, um, a lot of years have passed, and so there may be some things that um, might be um, uh, a little fuzzy, and, right. <laughs> and, and that's okay. We yes, just... that's fine. Okay. I, I have only some information, and it may or may not be true. <laughs> Okay, well, we, uh, we think that most of it is true, and yeah. the reason we do is because we were here with you about six years ago, mm -hmm. and we did two interviews, and that was kind of when we first got, my husband John Jernigan and I got interested in the history of King City. So mm -hmm. you taught us a lot of things about King City that we didn't really know, and we weren't really sure if they were true. Mm -hmm. But now that six years has passed, other people have told us the exact same thing mm -hmm. that you told us. Mm -hmm. And so now we know that most of what you remember is true. So we have confidence Very in you. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so today um, we're just going to do a recap um, uh, of uh, some information about you. So can you remind us of the year that you were born? Uh, 1925. Okay. And were you born in King City? Yes, okay. I was born at home, and uh, I don't think there was a hospital at that time. So, and so that 1925. So that makes you uh, mm. right now 92. 92, and a couple years ago we came and celebrated your 90th birthday. <laughs> right. So. You uh, are um, one of the patriarchs of King City. I'm not sure there's too many people that have as many years uh, of We're experience there. We're getting few there. and far between. <laughs> and then the year you graduated from King City High School? 1943. 1943. And the number of years that you lived in King City? Oh, about 75 years with, okay. with uh, a couple of, well, several years at college and four years in the Navy. Okay, and then you left uh, King City in what year to move uh, to? The year 2000. 2000, and you moved here to Aurora. Right. Grande. Okay. Great. So um, we covered a lot of topics uh, six years ago when mm -hmm. we were here, but one of the things that we really wanted to talk to you about is the Spreckles canal system mm -hmm. and the reason is is that one day my husband and I we live on North Mildred Avenue we're walking down Broadway and now that we're more aware of history we we look at the names of things and we saw the the sign Canal Street and all of a sudden it occurred to me well was there a canal yep. here mm -hmm. and so we started asking around and we found out that yes there was a canal but not very many people know about that mm -hmm. so when you told us that you had some memories of that we wanted to see if you could tell us what you remember about the canal system that ran through mm -hmm. King City when we moved to the ranch uh, the Spreckles ranch uh, north of the cemetery the houses the the farm system was right along the canal. We were out of town about a half a mile. And the canal, in my recollection, started at Broadway there by the cemetery, and it went north uh, through the Spreckles Ranch and made some a long curve. It went past our uh, farm headquarters and so forth. And it went on north and uh, made a long circular curve over Third Street, or sometimes it's called uh, Spreckles Road. And it ended up over at the railroad. 
and it was uh, out of commission the whole time we were there. And it had been for a long time because there was debris uh, accumulated and the banks of the canal had sloughed off and so forth. And there were also several crossings that had, made, had been made for roads and for other ditches to cross it. So it hadn't been in use for uh, many years. And I have always wondered where it originated because in that area the water runs north and west because of the land slopes. And so there had to be a, an extension of that beyond uh, Broadway mm -hmm. uh, through what was uh, at one time the Forden Ranch. And I think I remember when I was a child and if we drove down 101 south of town, the road went between the railroad and I thought there was a canal system, abandoned probably, but the remnants of it were there. And I don't know where it, if that's the case, I don't know where that started. I have thought that originally there must have been a connection with the Salinas River south of town a few miles because either that or it had to be pumped into this canal. And in those days, I don't think they had large pumps. So I've never been able to figure out just where that water originated. Also, it would have to cross the San Lorenzo Canyon there. Right. And that's quite deep, and it would be long. And I don't know whether they could have made a flume across that. It doesn't seem likely, but maybe it was. Um, so that I, I don't know, but uh, we, we lived right next to the canal, but it was dead. It was just a low spot. And then the eucalyptus trees were planted in there. There were rows of eucalyptus trees the whole distance from the cemetery clear around to the railroad. And there were several rows on each ditch uh, canal bank. Um, and eucalyptus in its early days grows fairly fast, but it slows down. And these eucalyptus trees were huge. They were like 100, 150 feet high. I have pictures that show uh, the, canal, the uh, trees have all been removed now, but people are surprised when they see pictures of how tall those trees were. I remember a, an incident when I was in grade school um, there was a, a very wet winter, so the ground was saturated by uh, water. And can, uh, uh, eucalyptus trees are shallow rooted. They have a ball of roots around the trunk. And then the wind came up, a very strong wind, and it blew a lot of eucalyptus trees right over. And uh, it was an emergency sort of situation where power lines had been hit and so forth. And none of the trees fell across our buildings at the ranch, but they were close enough they could have been destroyed. And that always made such an impression on me that these huge trees could be blown over like that. So it was one of those uh, memorable events as a child that I have never seen again. There's a eucalyptus grove down in San Lorenzo Park, mm -hmm. and just recently, last year, a couple of very big trees mm -hmm. fell down. Mm -hmm. And so I, I know what you're, what you're talking yeah. about. I think eucalyptus trees were introduced into the Salinas Valley because of the winds, and they were brought in, I understand, from Australia. They were native to Australia, where the weather and the soils and so forth are probably very similar to the conditions here. Now, when you were um, uh, a young boy and you were living on the ranch, now the ranch, you say it was a half a mile north of the cemetery. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where San Antonio Drive goes now. We have the new peripheral yes, road. Yes, yes. The perimeter road. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. that's and, right. 
And, and I remember you said that as a boy, you used to play by the olive trees in the cemetery. Um, yes, uh, what my brother and my cousin Bob, who lived there uh, also, we belonged to the 4-H club, and we had uh, projects of uh, sheep, and uh, we handled them together, so the three of us had this uh, flock of sheep, and we would go out and herd the sheep around on wasteland, and they would eat the native grass and so forth. And at that time, the cemetery property was smaller than it is now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to herd our sheep down there, and we'd pasture them on this native grass. So that property is now part of the cemetery. Interesting. As, uh, and sometimes we had an old horse that was uh, not very energetic, but we rode that horse while we were uh, herding our sheep around. Now, something you told me that I wasn't aware of, you said that when you remember the canal system, it had been abandoned. Yes. So you would have been at least, uh, it, that would have been in the 30s, because you yes. were born in 25. Yes. And so in the 30s, it had been abandoned. and. Mm -hmm. We think it was a system that Spreckle Sugar used for bringing water to to Why, why else would they bring, build a canal? Well, but the reason that I'm saying that is that we know that Spreckle Sugar Company bought the San Lorenzo Rancho from Charles King around 1897. And so sometime after that, they would have built yes. the canals but then they were out of use by the time you remember it. So I'm just trying to get in my mind when the canals were used and... I've wondered the same things, that it doesn't make sense to me because who was the former owner of this? Um, Charles King? Yes, before, before Spreckles. Spreckles, yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I can't imagine in those days why they would be irrigating, because I think the agriculture in that area uh, originally would be um, grain crops, which are dry land crop, and maybe cattle grazing in the native grasses and so forth. And they wouldn't require a tremendous amount of water. No, but obviously Spreckles was in doing sugar beets, and right. those required a lot of water. Yes, yes, they were. Yeah. I don't understand it. I know that eucalyptus can grow pretty fast, mm -hmm. but I remember when we moved there in 1930, they were huge. So it <laughs> seemed like in that 25 or 30 years, it doesn't seem like they could be that big and have been abandoned for so long. Well, I want to show you um, uh, a map that John and I found at the Soledad Historical Society. Mm -hmm. And this was our first evidence that there was a canal and where it came from. So here's King City, and mm -hmm. I know this is very tiny and difficult right. to read. But here's the Salinas River mm -hmm. going through here, and here's mm -hmm. King City. And there's a little line here, and it says S.W. Canal Salinas. Oh, let's see. I might have to use a magnifier. Salinas Canal. So it comes down here. Here's, here you can see the railroad tracks going along. Mm -hmm. Here you can see uh, the canal line going oh, here, really? coming by. And this backs up what you were saying, that it had to have come out of the Salinas River. Because here's the Salinas River, and here's the line that goes over by the railroad tracks, right. then back in through here and then out through these and back over, exactly like what you're describing. It turns around and goes back over to um, by the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here's all the plots of land that right. were part of Spreckles Sugar. How old is this map, do you know? 
Yes, we do. Um, John, I'm trying to remember what the date is. 1898 or something. 1898. So, so before the turn early. of the century, yeah. yeah. Very early. And then there's <coughs> also another canal that came out of San Lorenzo uh, Creek, and it oh. shows that on here, here too. Here's this. Here's the San Lorenzo Creek, and then here's the San Lorenzo Canal coming out of this oh. area here. So there were two canals, this one, and then the one coming from the north. Anyway, we were very excited when we found this map because... Yes, this answers this, some questions. Yes. I didn't know there was a second canal, uh, but there's um, the irrigation system here gets more complicated um, on things that I knew about, but only partially. Um, I assume that the uh, irrigation for this whole area was from a big pumping plant that was on our lease just north of the cemetery. And it was very large and very powerful and it drew from several wells. They were connected together somehow. And that pump was in use yet when we came there. And we had all open ditches, there were no under ground pipelines mm -hmm. until after World War II. Mm. And then it was a much more efficient thing when they had underground pipelines, right. a less evaporation and um, a more easy control of the water. Well, I have another picture here I want to show you that John got from the Monterey County Ag and Rural Life Museum. <coughs> And we think it might have something to do with um, the area that was near you. Do you recognize any of this, um, these buildings? Um, the information on the, back. on the back says Spreckles Sugar Company Pumping Plant near King City on Ranch Number no. 3, okay. 1904. We were on that ranch, and I don't recognize... Is this a photograph or a, a drawing? This is a photograph, and it's an old, it's a really old photograph. I'd have to study it over some more uh, in the light of what I've known and what I have seen. I didn't see all of this, but some of this might have been uh, there when I w would recall. I don't remember all of this building, but there was a big pumping house that is, uh, was moved over to the headquarter ranch uh, where we used it. I'm not sure that this is it, but it could be. Um, well, if this was in 1904, that was still a long time before you were born, so. But you see, this pumping plant was still being used, if this is the one, and, uh -huh. and I think it is, mm -hmm. it was used until 19, in the 19, late 40s, when World War II mm -hmm. was over. Mm -hmm. And I'll introduce another uh, problem here. There was an earlier pipe system that went from, I'm told, down by the river. There was a pumping station somewhere along the riverbank and this is word of mouth, and I'm not sure how true it is, but there was an underground pipeline that was put in that went clear up to the, the ranch just below the airport, way up there. And one of, when my uncle and I one day discovered on, there are two levels in, in the soil out there. And I think it's because it is a river bed and over the centuries the river bed has changed and it left this bank that's, you know, a drop of maybe 15 or 20 feet. Mm -hmm. And out of that bank near this pumping plant, there was a bunch of brush that kind of closed it up. But when that brush was removed, we discovered that at the surface at that lower level, we could look into a wooden pipeline 
that was built similarly to wooden water tanks. They have beveled edges and they put together with bands. And we couldn't believe that this was there. And it was probably four feet in diameter. And we foolishly thought we were going to go into that and see where it went. Really? So we uh, went to, to the house and got flashlights. And we walked into that thing, stooped over, and we walked in for a number of paces. And I think now, you know, it was the most foolish thing I've ever done. <laughs> Because if it had caved in, sure. no one would never know where we were. Uh, but according to my knowledge and uh, assumptions, that pipe had to go clear under the canal because it was on that level. And I don't know where it would have ended up, but it was a big pipe, wooden pipe, and we were in it for a little while, and I, I don't know when it was put in. I think it must have been put in before the canal went in, because at that grade and that distance, it would be under the canal, because these pipelines are all put in on a certain grade, you know, for the efficiency of the pumps. and. Uh, because if it had been done afterwards, you could tell the trees would have been removed and so forth. So I can't imagine what, how that all fit together. And I would think that somewhere there would, if there was another pumping plant right along the riverbank, we could find a record of it somewhere, somehow. So there's some unknown uh, Yes, there's more to the puzzle. Right. More to the puzzle. And of course, in the 1930s, I think it was, we had one or maybe more years of flood conditions there. And large chunks of land were washed into the river so that the river bank was moved back, oh, a number of feet at least once and maybe more. And uh, it's possible that there has been um, a pumping plant in there that was just washed out. I don't know. Well, now, the, the place where your ranch was, where you lived, who owns that now, John, or who runs it? I think the Romans. Romans, John Romans Ranch. And there's families that live there. Do you, did your ranch ever flood? Or was it up high enough? It was high enough. Okay. Uh, the, you see, our lease supposedly included some of that river land. Oh, uh, okay. uh, farther north, mm -hmm. there was kind of an apron out there. Mm -hmm. The river channel was here, but in flood stage, it could come up. But we weren't farming that land. The only thing we did with it is we had some cattle that pastured out there. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't irrigated and cultivated land that we mm -hmm. ever had flooded. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me then um, ask you um, a, a couple of other things that, would, that you remember about the Spreckles Sugar Company. Your father worked for them? Yes, he did for a short time as a single man before, I think, before we, he was married. Mm -hmm. And then you, did you work for them? No. Or? No, just your father, just but you father. lived on the, on the ranch. Right, not during that time. He, uh, I think that was for a short period of time before my parents were married. And I think it was during the time when Spreckles actually farmed the land themselves with uh, hired labor. And, uh, and the buildings that we lived in were actually like a labor camp. There were barns for a lot of horses, big hay barns, and uh, the house we lived in, I think, was a dormitory or bunkhouse. And then there was another house there that was used for the mess hall, kitchen and so forth. And there was a building that was used as a, sh a, a wash house, you know, showers and so forth. So it was a pretty primitive thing that we moved into. Was it was it a rental that your parents, because of their association with um, your father's association with Spreckles, were able to rent the property? Or is 
that we rented the property? Or? Yeah, was it because of? No, we rented the property. Well, we moved into this location in 1930. Uh-huh. We had lived at another location from 27 to 30. And at that time, there were leases, but it was a share rent. We basically were sharecroppers. OK. And by that, you mean you whatever you raised, you had to give a portion of it to Spreckles? Yes, and there were some conditions. Because they were in the sugar business, we were required to raise sugar beets on one third of the rent, uh, rented land each year. And the other land could be used for other crops. Mom, what kind of crops do you remember? Well, mainly in the early days it was dry beans, like pink beans were uh, uh, one of King City's specialties, and other varieties of beans. But I think that was mainly what was raised, although uh, I think there was a lot of alfalfa raised there for cattle feed, and you could just flood the land, but it still has to be irrigated. So I think it's mainly just sugar beets and dry beans until we had better water systems. OK. Um, and any other memories that you have of living on the, the Spreckles sugar property? <laughs> there are lots of petty things. Uh, <laughs> I remember when we moved there, there were three very large barns uh, that were more or less abandoned at that time because they were built to house hundreds of horses. Uh, and in very short order, they tore down two completely, and then they shortened one up halfway so that we still had a barn, but it was only uh, half of one of the original barns. We had. Uh, we had a few horses that were, you know, draft horses. I never drove horses, although some were used that way on our land, on our lease. Um, but it was during the period when tractors were more used, and mechanism was more commonly used. But uh, I remember those barns, and they were f fun to play in and to <laughs> Uh, just explore. Uh, I remember, <laughs> it makes me sound ridiculous, but I remember <laughs> one time I went into one of these barns and there was a nest of big crawling things and I didn't know it was repulsive. And I ran to the house to tell my mother I'd found a nest of snakes. And she grabbed me by the hand and took me out there, and she kind of laughed, and she said, those are just maggots. Ooh. <laughs> but, it, you know, it was kind of an exciting uh, uh, <laughs> place to, to live and explore. Some, uh, I remember some of that. Great. Okay, well, why don't we take a, about a five-minute break? How would that be? And we'll get a drink of water, and how's that sound, yeah, Ernest? Then we'll good. finish up. Okay. Okay. We're going to continue with a couple more questions. So, Ernest, I want to bring up the topic of the uh, railroad that came through King City. I want to ask if you remember uh, ever riding it as a passenger train or loading crops onto uh, the cars. No, I've, I was never involved in loading uh, crops onto the cars. We delivered beans uh, that were harvested to the uh, milling company's rail, uh, warehouse right along the railroad. And they would clean, process the beans, and ship them out on the, on the trains. However, I wasn't involved in that. Uh, I don't recall ever taking a train out of King City. I think maybe I came through King City one time when I had enlisted in the Navy, and they put us on a train. We went, we enlisted in San Francisco, and then they shipped us to San Diego. And I think it was at night. I think we went through King City, but I'm not sure. So I have no experience with the trains in in King City. Just listening to the whistles. Yes, <laughs> we were. 
where we lived over there was only about a mile from that. And uh, in the daytime, you hardly ever heard the train. But at night, or after a rain, it seemed like there was something about the air being clean and no wind, that it sounded like the train was coming through the house. You know, I mean, it was <laughs> yes. right in your face. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, I had no uh, experience with trains there. Okay, what about um, Highway 101 downtown? Um, Highway 101 used to run right through downtown King yes. City. Do you have yes. some recollections of that? Oh, yes. Uh, traffic was heavy right down Broadway. And there is one story that is not funny, but strange. Um, the highway would come through, coming from the south, it would come in on First Street, and then it would make a 90 degree uh, left turn right. onto Broadway. And trucks, if the driver wasn't familiar with the route there, would be driving too fast, and they didn't really, in the middle of the night, and they'd end up in the lobby of the hotel because oh. they couldn't <laughs> stop, and <laughs> the momentum carried them right Ooh. into the Broadway of the hotel. I mean, to the uh, lobby of the hotel. Do you mean the El Camino Hotel? Yes, yes. yes right on the corner. And uh, so they put signs up all over the place, mm -hmm. you know. Be careful, huh? Be careful, slow down. Mm -hmm. uh, and just for pedestrians, it was uh, harder to cross the street. Uh, so it was hard for both the drivers of the traffic as well as the local residents. And so when... Uh, it changed the makeup and the feel of Broadway when uh, the highway went around town. Mm -hmm. For one thing, there used to be a lot of gas stations right on Broadway. Right. And, uh, so, and they did well. But when the freeway skirted the town, a lot of those uh, gas stations just closed up because they <laughs> couldn't compete. With, well, they relocated, right. and so it changed. It changed the feel of the town mm -hmm. when the mm -hmm. free went, freeway went around it. It was a significant uh, moment in time, right, for the town. It was a. It was the thing to do, but it it meant a big uh, change. Right. 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 So um, one thing that John and I have been trying to figure out is the exact location of the King Ranch. And I want to ask you if you have any knowledge of that. Charles King, no. his main ranch was north of town, but we don't, it's the books that we've read said about three miles north of town. Are you where talking about? Where the road about bends to oh, go to that's, meet Metz. Uh, that's not the King Ranch, that was the Spreckles Ranch. Mm hmm. Well, I think it was well, originally Charles King's ranch. <clears throat> I have a picture somewhere uh, that show the cluster of buildings there at that intersection. It's back a little ways from the actual road, but I've been out there and within my memory, it was farmed by Emil Myers, who was Leo Myers' brother and uh, Robert Myers' uncle. and. I recognized some of the buildings that were there. Th there was a distinctive building that had a stairway on the outside of the building. And that was, within my memory, it was, it was a Sp Spreckles Ranch. Yeah, and you, you referred to the main ranch, is that what you mean? Because when we were talking earlier, you said something about, oh, out okay. at the main ranch. There, I, what I call the main ranch is, uh, where we lived first, and it was a cluster of buildings. Okay. There was a, a beat dump there. That's where the spur track came off the trains, and we loaded sugar beets there okay. for the rail transport to Spreckles, the town of Spreckles, okay. where the uh, processing plant was. In that area also, there was a cluster of buildings. There were several residents and there was a dairy there, and a milk processing plant, and a warehouse, 
and it's, I think it was sort of the headquarters for the whole ranch there. The super, superintendent of that ranch lived there, and we lived down the road a little ways. And there were several buildings, as well as this dairy. Was that before you moved to ranch number three? Yes. Okay. So you yeah. would have been really young then when you lived yes, there. Yes, between two and five. Oh, okay. But I remember quite a bit of things. Uh -huh. For example, do you remember Marie Doyle? Yes. Her mother-in-law, and I can't think what her name was, and the husband, Mr. and Mrs. Doyle were the superintendents of the ranch there, of the whole Spreckles Ranch. And they lived in one of the houses there, and he operated out of that. Mrs. Doyle started her floral business when they were out there. There was an empty barn right across the road from her. And, she, and I used to walk by that barn, and she was out in the barn making floral arrangements. And I thought that was the strangest thing. <laughs> <laughs> this lady was out in the barn making floral arrangements. And my mother had to explain to me that she, uh, she was in the nursery business and this, yes. why she was in the barn making floral <laughs> arrangements. <laughs> but I understand it now. But mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. then they moved, in, moved the business into town. I think when he retired from the uh, Spreckles. They moved south of town, brought some, bought some land down there, and uh, put up some greenhouses, I think, and they started uh, floral business in a big way. Mm, interesting. So that's what I call the main, the cluster of buildings there. Now when the Spreckles So uh, do you know if those buildings are still there? Some of them are. Really? Okay. Some and there was a spur, a railroad spur yes, that yes. came right there. Well, it was a little ways away, but mm -hmm, it was in that mm -hmm, cluster mm -hmm, of buildings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I haven't been out on that for years. Mm -hmm. Now, there, I think I've been told that that railroad spur has been taken out. But that beet dump was there for many years, and I drove mm -hmm. beet trucks. And I have pictures before trucks were used to haul beets. Horses with wagons, big wagons loaded with sugar beets, were using that dump before trucks were used. Wow. So it's old. Yes. But when we went in there, they used to call, they'd call it the home ranch because that's where the Spreckles people lived. And we were the South Monte. And why they called us the South Monte, I don't know, because Monte <laughs> in Spanish means mountain, hmm. doesn't it? Interesting. Monte Vista and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. hmm. We'll have to ask that question and see if we can get the piece of that puzzle answered. Right. Hmm. Interesting. Or somewhere we'll read it. Um, John and I are working right now on a project to try to get a new microfilm scanner for the King okay. City Rustler for the library. Oh, yeah. And we think that the articles in the Rustler will answer a lot of these questions that You know, have. while you're on that subject, I have wondered if the two Casey sons uh, would have any information, historical things, uh, early publications, and, and that sort of thing that would clarify any of these Questions. I think we're going to ask them. I those. know the Rustler put out a number of uh, anniversary editions mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. and I have some of those. Mm -hmm. But uh, they they may have other things mm -hmm. that would clarify it. Well, and we encourage anybody that has old documents or old special editions like that to save them because yes. now they can be scanned. Mm -hmm. and, and saved, but yeah. otherwise they're just in somebody's box somewhere and they yeah. have a lot of important information. Right. So um, one of the last things that I want to um, talk to you about is your memories of the Community Baptist Church. I yeah. know you were a member there for Yes, a for a long time. Uh -huh. Well, we, s we uh, began to attend there in the 1930s. 
I don't remember just when. Uh, the building was much smaller. There was the sanctuary, mm -hmm. and uh, I think there was one r room on the back that was a, n a nursery or a, uh, for s children and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a person at parsonage there for the pastor and his family. And then in the l in the late 30s, I think it was, there was an addition put on the back that was a, a, an assembly hall, you know, a social hall, mm -hmm. and a kitchen was put in, and mm -hmm. there were several separate con uh, Sunday school rooms, and s part of that had a second floor, which was also used mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. So that back of the sanctuary was all added within my memory. And that was at the corner of uh, South Vanderhurst and Bassett. Bassett, right across the street from City Hall. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. And that uh, sanctuary, I understand, was built in the 1890s. Yes, it is a very early building in King City. Right. So do you have uh, good memories of uh, attending church there? Or is yes, it I thought it was... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was appropriate for the community, and mm -hmm. it had people of different denominations that were compatible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you can't have so many churches with right. a few people. Right. And, right. Uh, and I think it was workable, mm -hmm. uh, unless uh, uh, there were certain denominations that were not as uh, easily met, uh, mm -hmm. mixed. Mm -hmm. so forth but mm -hmm. yes I, I felt that it was good and your parents uh, went there from the time they came oh yes to yeah they had a Baptist background huh pardon did they have a Baptist background no no uh, but here again is why I say that it's a mixture mm -hmm. of different mm -hmm. denominations mm -hmm. my mother uh, was raised in a Methodist church out okay. in Greenfield okay and my father was uh, Church of Christ in Greenfield. Wow. <coughs> and we had t attended Sunday school. Mm -hmm. So any other questions about the community church that we want to ask? If not, I'm going to go on to this picture that uh, I have of um, that we discovered of something we think is called Patterson's Grove, a oh, yes. big eucalyptus <laughs> tree grove on what is now Ellis and um, North Mildred. Do you remember this grove? Oh yes, very well. And was it called Patterson's Grove? Yes. And, and it was after, what was the name of the man? Uh, Ellis, Ellis Patterson, Patterson, who was the, uh, I think at one time he was the Lieutenant Governor of mm -hmm. California. I think I have uh, read something about that. That was a fairly large grove. You see, it was one block deep and about two blocks long. Oh, okay. And uh, our field would be over here on the left side. Mm -hmm. This would be the corner, the original corner of the streets mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you ever spend time in this grove? No. Mm -hmm. uh, was the was the canal we were talking about earlier? Was it near this? No. The canal would have been farther north. Quite a well west. Oh, west. Okay. West. North, okay. And, See, mm -hmm. because the high school is right over right, here right, somewhere, right. and uh, our land used to, our lease uh -huh. used to go all the way out to Broadway over here. Uh, oh. By the cemetery? Yeah. Oh. Clear out to Broadway. Okay. Because the high school property didn't go as far as it does now. Mm. It stopped at in line with uh, Canal Street. Oh. So we had quite a few acres in there that, that are now. Oh. Uh, high the gymnasium school. and the football f or the baseball fields right. and stuff. So that was land you farmed. Yeah. Huh? And I think a lot of it is like uh, bus barns and yes, so forth. Yes, right, right, between yeah. there and the cemetery. Right. Mm. Yes, I recognize some of this and others not. 
Well, this is the house where my husband and I live, and of course this was the Hobbles house. Mm -hmm. I was going to show this here so you can see it, um, where Ma and Pa Hobbles, the owners yes. of the theater, lived in that old house, so that's mm -hmm. a, a historic house too. So this is a very, very tiny picture that we uncovered. Uh, somebody gave to us, mm -hmm. and John blew it up. And when, it's great. When, when it was little, we we couldn't quite figure out what we were looking at. But once we blew it up, right. we said, oh, this is that grove of trees yeah. that you said you had heard that Dr. Brumwell a long time ago had planted them. And I think I've, I've read an, a historic article that says that that he planted these trees. And I'm gonna go back and research that. And But then we have the link between why did it become called, why did, was it called Patterson's Grove? We don't know I the answer th to I that. think that maybe both of them were involved in it. You know, this is a project that I see it uh, as being a joint thing with several mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Brummel, well, uh, obviously, he's not gonna get out there and dig holes, with, <laughs> uh, but he may have been investing in it mm -hmm. or something of the sort. Maybe it was a joint venture mm -hmm. because someone would have to buy the property. I imagine it was part of Spreckle's original. See, the town has gradually moved out, right. buying strips of land right. and so forth. Right. Uh, so who knows? It's uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know it's not that uh, important an issue, but just a curiosity. Yeah, we love this picture. Yeah, that's a good one, and the map I think is very significant. So um, I think that concludes the questions that I have. Unless there is, are there any other comments, Ernest, that you have been thinking about that you wanna? Wanna, I can't uh, think share? of anything. I probably, I'm sure we will as soon as we're, <laughs> we're done You know, tomorrow recording. I'll think of things that I should have <laughs> asked or told you. But First, were you involved in any other groups in King City besides uh, the Community Baptist, maybe the Masons or the Rotary? No. Or um, no. Uh, we were 4-H club, you know, when we were kids of a certain age. Um, I offhand I can't think of any other organizations that I would be involved with when I went away to college and so forth there was a lot more activity but uh, a small town has <laughs> not as many uh, choices and I'm trying to remember where you went to college Cal Poly Cal Poly and then um, uh, all three of your children graduated from King City High School, correct? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And two of them graduated from Cal Poly. Oh, okay. Scott and Jill both did. Okay. And I had an uncle. See, I had an uncle. My father's youngest brother attended what was a trade school there at Cal Poly. It mm -hmm. wasn't originally mm -hmm. a four-year college, but. Mm -hmm. He technically attended Cal Poly, so mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. was a graduate of that. Uh, I was, my daughter and son were, mm -hmm. and now my grandson are attending it. So really? four, four generations. So you have a grandson going to Cal yeah. Poly. And then your son Fred, where did he go to school? Uh, At college? Hey, uh, One of those universities, huh? Uh, in <laughs> Westmont. Oh, Westmont, yeah, down Westmont by Santa Barbara. In Santa uh -huh. Barbara. Uh huh. Yeah, and then he went to Hastings Law School. Uh huh. And uh, I guess that's it. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, let's see, I just thought of one more question. Let me see if I can. Um, oh, um, I know last week when we saw you in King City, you were attending a uh, mm -hmm. memorial service mm -hmm. for. Um, Kay Thayer. Right. And how was she related to you? Uh, she is the wife of my mother's youngest, younger brother. Okay. So she's an aunt by marriage to me, not a blood relative. And so the the Thayer family was, well, that was your mother's yes, maiden name? Yes, yes. So that right. was, yeah. They've been there for a long time, uh -huh. a large family, but there aren't any left, I think, in King City anymore. Mm -hmm. They've scattered. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. 
moved but around. But they left an imprint just like you have left an imprint on King City. And that's why we thought it was so important that we sit down and, and talk about some of these um, memories that you have. So I want to commission you to continue to look <laughs> for old pictures and uh, publications or things that might answer some uh, questions that have come up in our conversation. Well, you know, just the conversation and you're showing me some of what you have, have stimulated my uh, <laughs> interest in that and I I know I've saved a lot uh, and uh, I'll have to look and see uh, it's a kind of a humorous thing but among my many treasures I have a picture uh, I have a copy of a newspaper from Toledo Ohio from 1888 oh, wow. <laughs> why I have it I don't know or where it, how I got it I don't know but it's a treasure from Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> uh, well, I've we, never been in Toledo. <laughs> there might be something in there for some reason that you kept it. But we do, uh, one time when we visited you, we know that you had the Home Seekers edition from Clark Colony. And so we want oh, you to yes. keep, keep a lookout for that. And, um, yes. and any other thing that we'll have to come back and um, I'm very interested in your book about the Salinian Indians. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm studying on, uh, trying to study up on that. And so every time we talk, we kind of learn a little something more. So that's what makes these so interesting. So I just want to thank you for taking this time. And well, you're very welcome. I've enjoyed, uh, well, the, your input. And I think this is what's valuable of, about each of us having some of the input and some of the answers mm -hmm. uh, because when we ask questions we like to know the answers right. <coughs> so. okay well i think that will conclude our interview and thank you very much you're very welcome <laughs>